Welcome to Mind Pump, the world's number one ranked fitness, health, and entertainment podcast. Now, in this episode, we answer fitness and health questions that are asked by our listeners. And the way we open the episode is by talking about current events and studies, and we mention supplements. And so in this episode, I'm going to break down all the stuff, actually, before the episode starts. And so you know what happens through the episode from beginning to end. By the way, you can go to mindpumppodcast.com and fast forward to your favorite part. Everything is time stamped. All right, so we open up by talking about smart training and aches and pains. Uh, yeah, I know we've been trainers for a long time, but we kind of hurt ourselves. Do we apply our own methods? Then I talk about the lady who ran a six-minute mile while nine months pregnant. Crazy. Mm, putting us all to shame. Then we talk about how I got shadow banned on Instagram. Thanks, guys. Uh, I talk about men wearing heels and why that's going backwards, not for the reasons you think. Um, I talk about the laws in California for Christmas. This is great. They're telling us what this we can and can't do. This is my favorite part, Sal. Awesome. Justin brought up a beer made in Iceland with whale testicle. <laughs> yum. Yum, yum. Uh, we talk about one of our sponsors, Pluto Pillow. Uh, now, Pluto Pillow allows you to customize your pillow based on your height, your preferences, um, if you like things soft or more firm. Um, great company. Really improved my sleep. Um, and the sleep of my co-hosts. And because you listen to Mind Pump, you get 10% off all of their products. Just go to plutopillow.com forward slash Mind Pump and then use the code Mind Pump for that 10% off. Then we talk about uh, this company, apparently this app that is causing a lot of trouble because it can take people's clothes off, make them look like they're naked online. Can't wait to use it. Uh, which led us to talk about that guy who got fired from CNN, Tubin. <laughs> Pulling a tube in. Pulling a tube in. Then we talk about another company we work with, Ned. They make a sleep blend made with CBD, C CBN, and other compounds that, uh, to be quite honest, the most effective thing I've ever used ever for sleep. I mean, you take this an hour before you go to bed, and you sleep incredibly well and wake up very, very refreshed. If you want to try this product out, go to helloned.com. That's H E L L O. NED.com forward slash mind pump and then use the code mind pump for 15% off. Then we answer the fitness and health questions. Here's the first one What are some of the best ways to improve body coordination? Uh, this person's a competitor in timber sports. So we talk a little bit about that. Hmm. Next question What are some exercises that can help with tight upper trap muscles? Those are the muscles uh, that attach to the neck. Next question. What are our views on cleansing or fasting? And the final question, is there any detriment to always wearing sunglasses outside? I wear my sunglasses outside. Wow, you seem good. Yeah. Also, uh, four days left for this crazy, crazy sale. 50% off all workout programs. All MAPS workout programs, half off, and... All bundles. Now, bundles are already discounted. Bundles combine multiple maps programs hmm. and discount them 20 or 30% off. Take another 50% off that. Bundles so, are usually filled with joy. Half off everything, okay? So go to mapsfitnessproducts.com. That's the word maps, fitnessproducts.com, and then use the code October50. That's the word October and the number 50, no space. And it's t-shirt time. Holy cow, Yo, Doug. Sick, bick, dick, it's, uh, it's our favorite time of the week, Doug. Yeah, yeah, we lost Adam today. It's not his favorite time right now. <laughs> no, he's making time in the bathroom. <laughs> yes, he is. All right, so we have one winner for Apple Podcasts and one winner for Facebook. The winner for Apple Podcasts is Geek Gains. And for Facebook, Justin Sovichia. Both of you are winners in the name I just read to iTunes at mindpumpmedia.com. Include your shirt size and your shipping address, and we'll get that shirt right out to you. All Justins are winners. You want to know an easy way to tell if you're surrounded by fitness guys uh, over 35? <laughs> the noises no, we make when just, we sit down? Just right here. Ready? What is hurting on you, Justin? Well, yeah, my hip. Yeah. What bit, about you, Adam? You know, outside of my knee. Yeah. Right now. And I got, I got, and I got my elbow. <laughs> no sake, it's yeah. A, together, we're Voltron. Oh, yeah, yeah. We hurt everywhere. You can't talk about that. We're supposed to be encouraging people to get into working out. Yeah, right? oh, man. You know what it is though? It and it uh, it never fails. I was uh, I was doing an interview yesterday and uh, talking about the whole, you know, thing we, we when we discussed doing as little as possible to elicit the most amount of change. 
it never fails that you, you, know, you do more. My ego <laughs> wins all the time. Mm. The ego wins all the time because it's like, even though I know those rules and I live by those rules 90% of the time, there's still that 10% that the ego wins. And it says, you know what? You've been doing so good, Adam, these last two weeks. Why don't you see what you can do? You should, yeah, yeah. What you are you should, really made of? You should throw another 100 pounds on there just to see, yeah. just to yeah. make sure. It's that, good for you. That's that's what happens to me, dude. I'll, I'll be working out and I'll be like, oh my God, I'm so hurt. So then I'll go right. through a period of like smart training. Yeah. Then I'll start to feel good and be like, I wonder if I could lift that like I used to. Yeah. yeah. You know? That's Let's, exactly what it looks like. And then like. I do it, but then right afterwards I'm like, damn, well, I could. <laughs> yeah. But that wasn't a good well, idea. Well, especially if somebody's watching. You kind of got to add a little more. Yeah. Yeah. For that's me, it's, it's, for, well. for me it's, it's always like squatting or deadlifting. And it's always uh, because I've been in a rhythm for a while. And you know that, and you know when you hit these workouts, right? So I've been, uh, I've had like probably I want to say three or four like really good weeks where I've been consistent, and I've been consistently training three to four times at least, right? Some I think one week I even hit five, right? So I've I've been doing well, and I'm seeing uh, my squat strength go back up again, and I I can feel and like that's I, where the trouble comes. Oh yeah, I yeah. put the weight on the bar yesterday, and like to warm up, and it was just like when you when it feels light, it's like oh this. This is good. This is I'm getting back right, and then it's like <laughs> Bro, that exact phrase. <laughs> yeah. that Je- Jessica ca- calls me out every time because yeah. I'll come in after I'm all pumped. You know, I had a good workout, and I'll be like, <laughs> "Coming back, babe," yeah. and she'll be like, "You say that every time." <laughs> coming back. What do you mean coming back? I'm chasing my best workout of all time. You yeah, know what I mean? yeah. constantly. When I was like 28, and then my then my <laughs> then my knees the next morning go, "No, you're not yeah. actually." Yeah. Yeah. Let me remind you. Yeah, <laughs> your warranty. Experience. Inspired a long time ago. <laughs> whatever. I don't care anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just it is keep, what it is. Just yeah. keep doing what you I mean, whatever. I mean, this is why I remember going, I used, there were people that used to work out at my gyms that I would manage that were older. Um, and, and back then, older for me would have been over 50, right? But fit men and women. And they always, you know, the ones that were consistent, they always trained really good technique. They never really lifted super heavy, you know? That's why. Because yeah. they're smart. Yeah, they're smart. They're and we're reasonable. We're not being smart. Speaking of which, uh, since we're already on this feel bad about yourself train, hmm. um, what's the fastest mile you guys have ever run before? Ever? I yeah. Did I time it? I don't know if I ever <clears throat> timed it. Five fifty something for me. Damn. So right really? under six minutes. That's yeah. pretty good. When I was a kid, when I was when I was in uh, sixth, seventh, eighth grade, I was running times like that. That's great. I don't even remember. I can't. You don't I can't remember? Throw, uh-uh. Did you ever break six minutes? <sighs> Sure. Yeah. <laughs> you get out of your guy. Look at this what am I supposed to say? I don't remember. You know, yeah, I don't yeah. know how you guys remember all these stats. Like, they're so useless. Well, it's true. Adam uh, and I keep track of all. Yeah. Like why? Like, I mean, that was a big. Okay. Watch, watch, when watch, I was watch. a kid. Hold on, hold on. Okay. Adam, what's the most you've ever curled? Guarantee you know. <laughs> no, I guarantee you. Uh, yeah. I actually don't know that. Oh, okay. I, actually, I actually don't know that. All but right. when you were, at least when I was in school, uh, in uh, middle school and in high school, was a big deal. Uh, the mile. I mean, you. They tested you every year. Yeah. And yeah. So, presidential physical fitness. Yeah. I mean, I guess if you were in the lumped in the average, it probably wasn't a big deal. But if you were towards the, <laughs> the, the upper, that must have been what happened. Yeah, that <laughs> so, must have been the case. I mean, if you got sub six, that was a big deal. Yeah, his paper just had a P for pass. Yeah. <laughs> Good job, Justin. You passed. Yeah. I got ease, bro. Ease. Lots of ease. <laughs> yeah, lots of yeah, I was breaking records well, any, left to right. Anyway, recently this just happened. A uh, pregnant woman, nine months uh, pregnant, just ran a sub six minute mile. What? Yeah. Nine months pregnant, ran yep. sub she six. Was huffing. Yeah, it says here a California athlete's speed is going viral for an unusual reason after she ran a mile under six minutes. Can we see the video? While nine months pregnant, McKenna Myler, uh, 28, said her doctors cleared her to continue running with the with the Valor Track Club in Orange County. Really? Five to six times a week while pregnant. Her husband, Mike. Better $100 that she could not run a mile in under eight minutes. Way to go, Mike. Good yeah. job, bro. Yeah. Way to almost kill your kid, guy. Yeah, dude. That can't be safe, no? Uh, you know, dude, there's such a variance, yeah. right? An individual variance. Right. That- I mean, obviously, if she's stayed consistent training, like maybe that's not- a- She's used to that kind of yeah. intensity. I but- do not recommend anybody who's uh, pregnant try this. Yeah, Nine like months racing? pregnant, too. Yeah. I mean, that's insane. I do have the video here. I could send it to you, Doug. Wow, you that is impressive. That's crazy to me. 
You know, yeah, no, that's that's impressive. Yeah, how'd she feel after that? It makes you feel terrible, doesn't it? Though uh, a little bit. Oh yeah, that is. <laughs> oh yeah, I definitely. Embarrassing. I definitely passed the I, six minute. Mark. I I know I I in uh, I want to say junior high I, I was able to go under six minutes before I started lifting weights. Hmm. This is when I was like super skinny. Yeah, I was young. It was it was definitely middle school time when I was when I hit times like that. And then I think high school I was in the sixes. I, I definitely slowed down as I got taller and lankier. Uh, yeah, when I figured out that girls were more interested in my arm and the way my arms looked versus my ma- mm. mile time is when I didn't care anymore. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you couldn't walk I around. I remember 40 times because that's that was the only thing that mattered. Because you got all the gas, dude. Power. Pa- well, 40 times is what like every uh, other college, they were like evaluating your performance based off of that, the shuttle run, and then Yeah, uh, that's the older, vertical. though. That's older. That's like when like, I know. Ne- I can't go back to elementary. Who gives a shit about elementary school? Because that's <laughs> when we were excellent. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's it. fair. That's fair. Was it even a real mile too? You know, they they measured for us. They had like these cones. So I mean, who oh, knows? we had. You didn't have a quarter mile track at your school? No, elementary school. I didn't. Oh, we did. No, in junior uh, high we. So did. mine was real. So you probably didn't really actually do it that good. I don't uh, know. Yeah, it's probably, <laughs> it helps have a real school. I ran two laps. How much is that? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's half a mile. Yeah. <laughs> it I don't, is, I don't it is six minute you, half a mile. I don't think you. Yeah, did look, it. there she is, dude. Look I want to see this. I want to see the mechanics. She's flying, dude. Yeah, no, she she's, doesn't. She she's doesn't smooth. Look, she doesn't even look like she's eight, eight, eight months pregnant. She's nine like, months. She's not like nine months. Nine too months. bouncy or anything, you know? No, I mean, I mean that's tough because I mean Jessica's nine months pregnant, and yeah. you could see that. Look at that. She, she just. Does, well, she's she not even, that big. She doesn't look big at all. Yeah, she's not that big. Oh no, not at all. That's no. weird. Yeah, that's weird. Oh I mean, yeah, look her, at that. Her posture is definitely interesting. Running like that. It, this baby ran a, a mile before it was even born. That's crazy, dude. That's insane. Well, I hope she's healthy and she does. Uh, she's good. But I've seen pregnant yeah. women hurt themselves uh, before from trying to. I'm surprised the doctors released her to do that. Doesn't it seem? Yeah. Here's here's the funny thing. Uh, no offense to any doctors listening right now, but doctors know very little about fitness, um, you know, and athletic performance. So I don't. What kind of metrics are the doctors using to clear her? You know? Yeah. How do you I feel? Know. I feel good. Okay, you're good. Yeah. You know, what, what's the clearance? They, well, they're normally on the other side of that. Like I, most doctors tell them not to run. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, so that's really, that's in- interesting that they would even push her in that direction. Her chiropractor did it. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, yeah. That was the doctor. Yeah. Anyway, dude, did I tell you guys I'm being shadow banned on, on uh, Instagram? No. Yeah. I'm telling you, it happened to me. Yeah. That video still that I drove all those people, I think it's still at well, 6,000. What makes you think that? Like, like what Like what are the numbers like you're used to? It just bro, like drops substantially or I, what? Bro, I, if I posted anything in my story, I would, and this is as of the recording of the podcast, right? I would get it, on a low day in 24 hours, 14,000 views on a high day is close to, close to 20,000 views. On just something in my story, right? right? Your memes, your yeah. basic shit that you post. Whatever, I'll post something I write or whatever. And what's a and what's a bad day? Because I I can see the difference in mine. Fourteen thousand. That's a bad day. Yeah, I would that's never. A- I mean, rarely would it even get even close to fourteen thousand. Um, and so I posted some memes that first I posted a meme of uh, Fifty Cent. Okay. Mm-hmm. So 50 Cent- he, Which is the one, by the way, that got blocked, right? Didn't that get- That's or, the first one that got, got blocked, flagged. which is so stupid. So 50 Cent obviously comes out with that tweet that says he's going to- He doesn't want to become 20 Cent because of the new Hilari- tax thing. Hilarious. That might, hilarious. So there was a- And this is funny. It wasn't even political. It's a picture of 50 Cent, <laughs> but with like Donald Morphed Trump's- Morphed into Donald Trump. Yeah, Donald yeah. Trump's haircut on him yeah. or whatever. I thought it looked hilarious. So I posted it. It was funny. And it got, it got uh, like a warning on it. Because the picture was was well, doctored or whatever, so I'm like, that's weird. Yeah, Every like, meme, right, is like that. I've never posted a single meme that wasn't doctored, but whatever. So then that happened. Then I posted another one that was I don't remember what it was exactly. I can't remember off the top of my head, but it was another political funny meme. And then that was it, dude. All of a sudden, I'm getting a thousand views in 24 hours. Wow. Man. Yeah, a thousand. Yeah, and that was yesterday. Today, I deleted all of them from yesterday. So I'm like, all right, let me see. Maybe one of them is causing this to happen. It's happening right now too. Yeah, yeah it's crazy. You finally got on their radar. I mean, yeah. I feel like I should pop some champagne or something like this. Is like a- <laughs> You've been trying so hard. You know? Yeah, I got the shadow band. Doing political podcast with wow. our, our buddy Mike and everybody. Mike Matthews. Well, you, they maybe do. It's that. You know, they do it in a way though. It's hard to, to hard to be for sure about, right? Because it's not like you're not no one's seeing it whatsoever. It's just like all of a sudden it just dramatically reduces it. 
Mm. That's just like the video that I posted. It's like they just throttle it. Yeah, right? way mm -hmm. down. Mm. So it, what is, does it mean that they're just not letting your normal people see it? Is that just yeah. not jumping in their feeds? I have no idea. Yeah, how they yeah. would do something like that, or or how it works. And I know they keep it a secret, right? They keep the algorithms and all that a secret. Well, that's the thing. I know there was like a big initiative with all tech companies after Trump got elected the first time <laughs> to not, you know, let that be a factor in terms of like swaying people either way. And so it's like, you know, that a lot of that had to keep going, you know, going yeah. into this election. You're trying too. to put the toothpaste back in the tube. Yeah. Yeah, like that's just gonna. Their their uh, social media is is the era of of free unregulated social media is over. That's I know. It. And what is the answer? I mean, what would be your answer to that? Right? Would be to you just can't you can't stop anything, good, bad, or ugly? Right? I mean, that's well, the only way you make it free and fair. If you want to be covered, right. otherwise, you, there's always going to be a side that is going to be upset. Well, so right? Being edited. If you want to be protected from uh, lawsuits and you want to be, uh, you know, ha have a good case for remaining un uh, unregulated. Then you can fall under. I don't remember what law this was, but it was the same. These laws that cover phone companies. So let's say, like we're here in California, we have PG&E. PG&E is not liable for something that I say over the phone, right? Because right. they just they're just there letting people talk. They don't edit. They don't do any of that stuff. It's all open, and so they're protected, so that they can. And that's a good thing. That's a good thing that they're protected because if they, right, it's not fair to PG&E if you and I were conspiring to rob a bank, and then PG&E gets sued, and then they get sued, exactly. Or you say something I don't like, or whatever. Right, right, right. right. Um, now, so social media is kind of tries to say that they're protected under that. The problem is, is they actively edit their content quite a bit, mm -hmm. and so now they that's what can, I mean. They would have to go completely the opposite, right? Correct. They would have nothing. You'd have to allow all things that are good, bad, and offensive. Mm -hmm. would go. So that's an interesting in, place to be, right? In which case, they probably wouldn't have very much business. Think about that. If we, how much, how many people would leave Facebook if it was completely open? If it was completely free, so they have to kind of do this balancing act of we got to edit it to be happy to make our customers happy. Right. Maybe they have their own intentions because they the want to keep people there. Yes. And, I mean that's the that's the basis of their whole business is to be able mm -hmm. to keep them on there so they can throw ads in their face. Well, do you know how many times they've tried to pass laws to uh, regulate the internet and stuff like that, and they always get slapped down. But now you have uh, you know first it was the Democrats that got pissed off because they said that the 2016 election was heavily influenced by social media. Mm -hmm. They went after social media giants. Right now, it's the conservatives that are going after them, uh, really, really heavy. And now the public is all kind of pissed off. Yeah. And this is right. This That's is why you, you, they're yeah. going to pass regulations. They are. It, it'll 100%. never. You, no one. You, you can't. You can't win, right? Nope. And no matter what, even if you're trying to be as uh, you know as bipartisan as possible, you're still always going to lean one way or another. Do you think this is uh, eventually going to affect podcasts? Uh, I don't in know. Our space. That's a good question. I would think that it, podcasts are probably more like the phone company thing because companies could just hold podcasts. Mm -hmm. But let's because there has yet to be like a, a, a social media like a, like a podcast social media type thing where you go on and it's easy to share and you see and that's been one of the criticisms of the podcast space right because they're harder to share and, and find. But if that happens, then I could see maybe. I mean, who knows? Who knows? I hope yeah. not. I, I like don't know. I just yeah, I always <laughs> I always like to uh, you know think ahead of all these things coming our way and, and see how it's going to affect our space. Because I mean, right now it just seems like there's so much free speech, and this is like the only place you get it anymore. And I just wonder what uh, you know the powers that be are going to start putting a, a spotlight over here. Yeah. Well. Yeah. We'll see. They're going to be regulated. I guarantee it. Oh, it's, yeah. it's over. Yeah. It's coming. Anyway, something else that, and this is not for the reasons that some people may think, so bear with me. Uh, I was read, reading this article about kind of fashion trends and stuff that's happening right now. You? Uh, Wait, yeah, I know. I know. Say that again? Accident? <laughs> no. Huh? No, let me While tell you. While you're watching SportsCenter? <laughs> yeah, just what? Yeah, like, My head would explode. Yeah, this yeah, is an upside down so, world. So, so no. yeah. <laughs> I'm going to act like Justin and Adam combined today. <laughs> oh, my God. I would love to see that. No. Yeah. So so apparently there are a growing number of men that are wearing heels and skirts to work. Now, Stop hold on a second. It, oh, this is true. Now, hold on a second. Why are you going to get me angry? So right? here's here's why this is backwards. This is why this is not progress. It's not because men shouldn't wear heels. I don't give a shit. Wear whatever you want. But because nobody should wear heels, they're hella uncomfortable. If we're gonna we're gonna progress, it should be the opposite. It should be women yeah. women not wearing them anymore, not men wearing them. Where are you going? What's wrong with you? 
That is they're so like the weird. worst thing for your feet and your posture. That's a thing right now. That's I, I just Where? read an article about there's there was a man in the UK. He's got to be following on Instagram, and it talked about how oh, you know what I want to more guys are starting to do that. I want to know the women that are fucking these guys. Yeah, that's <laughs> what I want. I want to meet them. Like what? I don't know. I don't personally know any women that are attracted to that. Really? Yeah. Are do you, bro? Do you forget no. like Prince? Do you remember Prince, the musician? No, no, no. Yeah, not the, that dude was accomplished. No. Is, yeah, that's totally. Like that is not. You, that is, you, you are not. I'm not allow you to draw oh, that. So, so that he was. He was getting. Laid not in spite of the fact that he wore no, but the, they're doing it. They're shirts. doing it to. They're doing it for a cause. I'm assuming, Back right? Then, it's not just because they. One. Are they doing it because of a cause, or it's like a new fashion? No, he likes it. He says it's a good fashion. And, oh, really? Yeah, that's really weird. Though. Yeah, it's that's backwards. I feel like progress would be people saying we're not going to wear heels anymore because it causes anterior pelvic tilt. And it, it hurts my. It's not good for my foot health and. They're uncut instead, and guys are picking them up. What are you guys doing? I don't know. Maybe yeah. they're trying to like equal it out. Yeah, but yeah. Why, but should it equal it out in the opposite direction? Yeah, it should. Yeah. Be I hope that. they're at least shaving their legs. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> well, like, since like, we're talking about mindful, since we're talking about ridiculous stuff, did you guys see the Christmas laws that came out from uh, Newsom? Oh my god, <sighs> is that real? It's real, right? It it's is. not fake. It, no. I had to, I had to like double check to make sure I wasn't. I, I you wasn't, know, I made it through like half that video, so I didn't even get all of it. What what what, what were oh, the? Uh, let me let me three, see if I can find. <clears> I'll, I'll tell you what I know. Then you oh, I got them. I got them okay, all. Okay, let's hear it. Okay. So these are the California uh, holiday gathering COVID rules. Only three families together at once. Three households. Three households. Right. Uh, guest tracing. So mm -hmm. when people show up to your, your party, yeah. you have to get their phone numbers and emails just in case someone gets sick so you can send it out to everybody and have guest tracing. And then, of course, report it to the, your government. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> report it, yeah, just yeah. like the Hitler Youth. Yeah. Let's do that. Gathering outside only, so you can't have an indoor Christmas party, which, okay, that's going to kind of be weird if it rains or whatever. <laughs> Internal bathroom, okay. Thank you. I appreciate for that one. If routinely sanitized, everyone must six, sit six feet apart. So you have, like, let's say you have – Eight people, people at your house, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you're sitting in your backyard, yeah. <laughs> ninety a, foot table. Yeah, he just likes to say things. Yeah. You know, like none of this stuff is like applicable to anything we're going through right now in uh, California. It's weird. Okay, food in single serve containers only. So you have to give it. Everybody has their own single serve container, and only two hours is allowed. Now, truth be told, I'm sure there's a lot of people that like these because now they have excuse like, ah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry guys, can't hang out that <laughs> sorry uh, Uncle Creeper, you can't come over and uh, get all drunk like you normally yeah, do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know what? This makes me laugh because it's like uh, every time it's such a dumb idea to pass any laws or regulations that you can't enforce. I know. How would they possibly enforce that? D they can't. It, that's why it's hilarious to me that he even brings it up. Like, what, like who's going to manage this? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And what happens if I don't do it? it yeah, and it, is he is he taking like tax money to like pay people to go out there and, and no, enforce that, it's, this? It's like the FBI warning on the videos that I talked about. This yeah, day. it's yeah, the no, same it thing. The same it's like thing. the mattress tag. Yeah, don't rip yeah. this off or you're going to jail. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, gonna be a, it's gonna be a big black market Christmas. What is the move uh, though? I mean, what is what? I mean, Sal, you're you're the one that's into the the politics. So what's the political move or why would you even come out and say that if you know you can't enforce it? You know, half the people are going to be for the other half. Is it is it because he thinks that more people would actually agree with it? Like, is there I, maybe we are the minority in this? Maybe we don't think this is like weird. He looks like the most ultra progressive guy that's ever existed. Like super anti COVID. I think part of it is maybe, and I have to put, you have to put yourself in the mindset of someone like that. I, I think sometimes politicians think that they're super like they're like kings. You know what I mean? Like, oh, oh people are going to do what I say. Yeah. And then number two, um, it, it, he can always say he did that. In other words, yeah. Well, I said it exactly. Yeah. In the future, yeah. looking back, listen. what was your response during COVID? Well, <laughs> look what I did. Okay, I mean, it, okay, that makes sense. Like totally. if it starts to spike in California and everything, he could go back and say, "Well, I told people not to do this." Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. okay yeah. Or that. if it doesn't spike, then he can take credit. Oh, well, <laughs> hey, this because. In California, you know, <laughs> we limited Christmas well, isn't that, parties. Don't, don't a lot a lot of other states think that we're doing such a great job, right? Isn't that what the isn't that the rumor that all California's lockdowns, we, the way we've eliminated or reduced the numbers uh, so drastically, considering how big we are, yeah, because everybody left. Yeah, but we had a huge <laughs> spike in the middle of lockdowns, what, even stricter lockdowns. Remember that? Remember yeah. the spike came up, and I mean, I mean. It, it's logical. If people are going to go out and be around each other, you're going to see more uh, COVID cases. That's yeah. logical. You have to count it, though, against all of the other unintended consequences. You can't just look at infections. you got to look at 
everything else and all of the other downstream, uh, you know, potential consequences, but, but they're not considering it all. Information like this is why I I drink sometimes. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest with you guys. <laughs> and and what I'm thirsty for is uh, this Icelandic brew. Have you guys what? heard about this Icelandic brew? It's like a it's like a craft brew. And they use uh, whale testicles and sheep's dung. <laughs> Why? In Can a, you imagine, like in a beer, in a beer, and it's they like the brew most, it. It's like the most manly beer you could drink, yeah, right? And it's also like the whales are like endangered. <laughs> <laughs> wow! I'm like, wow, you guys are really going for it well, with this beer. Well, you know, Iceland's known for their amazing cuisine, so this only makes. Actually, they're not. Have you know? Do you know that they have like? I think it's in Iceland. Are they rated the worst? Yeah, I think they have this food? fermented oh. shark meat dish that's supposed to be the worst tasting. thing. Thing of all time, yeah. I mean, I mean, this complements it well, exactly. Right? So, yeah, you so, want to down a nice beer. So, what's the deal with this beer? Why would they make it this way? I think it's like a traditional thing. Like, so they, they used to brew, uh, you, you know, back in the day, and so somebody, th- this beer company, decided to do it like as, um, you know, a, a traditional thing for like once a year they would like promote this craft brew that uh, you know locals would appreciate. Dude, that's why Vikings are so tough. I swear. Yeah. Because they, they can drink and eat anything. They just go through this. Yeah, there it is right there. Oh, From whale's sense. testicles. Oh, how big is a whale's testicle? That's what I'm though? wondering. It must be massive. Oh, yeah. Have you ever seen the pictures uh, of whales, like I think a whale penis? Have you seen how big those things are? <sighs> Have I? It's, I, it's, just, I mean, it's, it's just, <laughs> what are you guys Googling? I, mean, it's, I got what a place to over here? here. Well, nothing. It's just interesting. You yeah. know? Well, like, no, no, no. That doesn't just pop up in your feed. You have to actively It's go- got to be the biggest one. You, you right? have to actively Google that stuff. No, Doug's I mean, they're, at- they're, they're mammals. Uh, you got to, you know, they're, they're packing heat. Yeah, you got to look up uh, how big is a whale's yeah. testicle. Tell us exactly how you searched it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then click on images. <laughs> and scroll down five to the third image <laughs> no, to the right. Say anus there. Look at, Weird. Look at, it turns look. out that one fill whale t- weight. Wow, one testicle weighs seven to eight kilos and is the size of a basketball. That's not as big as I thought it would be. It's the size of a basketball. Yeah. <laughs> Bro, but for a whale, that's a small. Uh, that's small, dude. Yeah. There I, was, a, I suppose, scale wise. There was a guy with um, what's that disease? A terrible disease. Really, really bad. Oh, elephantitis. Yes. Yeah. You oh, ever the, seen a picture? Gonads. Yeah. You seen ever seen that. a picture of the guy where he's sitting on it? Oh yeah, on his own, his own. That's in. Actually, a, isn't I felt it, bad for that guy. Isn't that in the Guinness World Record? Isn't that that's in that? I think mm. it's where I've seen. I that think as it a was. Kid. Yeah, it, it looked like um, like a beanbag. Yeah, that he was sitting on, and it was his own. It was his own thing. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of beanbag, yeah. those Ouch. love sacks are massive, huh? How big was that love sack? Did you guys who has seen it? You haven't seen it yet, Justin. I haven't, haven't seen it. Doug is the only one that's seen it, huh? Is that thing huge or what? It's massive. Now, was this, let's be honest, everybody, or Doug, since you've seen this, let's just be clearly, totally honest. Was this one of Adam's impulse <laughs> buys or was this, like, is this like- Is a this good functional? Thing? Yeah, because Adam's been known to have impulse buys. Yeah, I think it could be good if everybody's at the house. Okay. okay. I, I was going to get you, Doug, if you did not- No, I, I, I would I would say <laughs> I think we're going to appreciate it when everybody's at the house. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, it is a very large- thing in the middle of a room. Yeah, see, Doug's, Doug should be in politics. He answers questions yeah, it's very, very... That was in the middle. It yeah. was. That was <laughs> very I measured. was watching it if he was going to be hard on me because it is. There's going to be a time. And I, here's the thing. I know, I know he has to agree because he's been the guy on the floor before. I have been. And that's mm-hmm. the hardwood floor. Yeah, and watching a guy. movie is not a fun place not to fun. be. How big is it? It's massive. I mean, it's it's big. Like Bigger than a whale's testicle. Like I'll tell you that right <laughs> now. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Like in this room, how big would it but be? I mean, more comfortable okay, than you. Okay, take Adam's chair fill the whole thing up with filler and it'd probably be at least that big oh it's even, it's yeah. more than that it's wow. bigger than yeah. that yeah, yeah. is well, it comfortable it's, it's, oh yeah it's wow. how much did it cost how many people how like, much should we buy it for don't ask those types of questions why not uh 1600 I think no it didn't dude yeah <sighs> something like that wait 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 hold on a second your tax dollars at work hold on a second yeah, yeah. a thousand six hundred dollars <laughs> we ri- spent it's, on it's a it's a write off <laughs> oh, okay this was an oh, impulse good. this was 100 percent an impulse buy no no he it. was talking about it for months I, for, yeah. I not impulse like, I didn't realize not. the price was a thousand dollars oh for, I was yeah, I bought one I also months. bought one for myself too so. I thought you were gonna say ninety bucks it's too big for my house though I can't fit it in my house God yeah why get through the front door why is it so expensive What's it lifetime with? lifetime guarantee okay so it's in forever okay mm, yeah, forever yeah, you're gonna have the life think about that in itself divide that by all the months you're gonna lay in it over the course of you know 30 40 years at least so <laughs> think of it that way <laughs> yeah. okay it also has a you know we have elk fur cover that you it, can unzip is that included in the price is it easily yes, washable included. that's yeah, yeah easily yeah. washable okay. okay and then it's filled with that memory foam dude oh yeah memory foam and you know how expensive those beds are <laughs> 
<laughs> it's worth every. Hey, wait till you go. Wait till you go up there. You haven't been up there right in a while. So when you go up there and you go lay in that thing, I'd rather have sixteen hundred dollar bills on the floor. Oh, on. God, get out of here! Get out of here! Well, you know me. I'm you're just, not a money guy. You don't no, even care about I'm that. I'm the cheap guy. Yeah, you're gonna like. You're gonna like it. You know what I'm saying? Right. You're well, like it. Speaking of uh, of mm-hmm. these types of things, how's Katrina enjoying her pillow? Oh, did you see I posted that yesterday? Yeah, so tell me all about what's yeah. what the deal. Well, so she finally got hers, right? So, um, you know, we're, we've been fighting over mine, right? So get your own pillow. Uh, she got hers, and hers came in uh, last night. She did the whole process? Of- yeah, yeah. You know, what's cool, too, they, they always send the, like a little card uh, with your name on it with like a little airhead candy in there. It's mm. like their, their signature calling, right? And then, and what I love about the company, what they do, and what I was explaining to her, because she, she was actually, oh, you know, I wish it was a little bit thicker. Because, I mean, the first time you do it, you're trying to figure out, like very few people nail it the first time. Yeah, yeah, I feel like very few people will know exactly. And this is right on the site. You go to the Pluto Pillow site, and then right away. Well, you not can only enter. that. So you, so they they send you a, your profile card, and then you all it, they also save it in in their website. Oh. So like when she goes back, right? Forgot so about that. so for example, so the idea is she'll sleep on this thing now for the next couple of weeks, and then she'll go back and make critiques. She'll say. Man, it was if it was a little fluffier, or if it was a little larger, or a little smaller. Like so, it has all the breakdown of all her preferences, and you can adjust all of them just a little bit. And then, or a you, lot. And then they send you, you send it back and get yeah, them. Yeah, then she can do. No, you don't send back that same pillow. Okay. You order another pillow. Okay. You get another pillow from it to you know make it perfect. But I mean, she she did pretty good for what she wants. For me. It's I like mine a little fluffier than hers. Did you compare the two to see? Yeah, my I she she we we were similar except for I like mine. Uh, she likes hers a little more firm, and she likes hers a little bit uh, flatter. I like mine uh, fluffier and softer, mm. so bigger, so more 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 uh, more. So they have like a zero to three. Well, that inches. makes sense because you got bigger shoulders, obviously. So your head has to right, right, has to go down or yeah. whatever. But I mean, it's such a such a cool company, dude. I mean, it's the way they send they the way they ship it over to you is really really nice. I like I love that they have the personalized card inside there. Well, I think when it comes to sleep. Um, customizable makes a big, it makes a huge difference. I, I don't know too many, like most people, if you take two random people, they're going to have different preferences for everything for when they sleep. Everything from the temperature to the, oh, yeah. and the pillow is one area that I, I, I don't know any, I mean, are they the first company? Yes, nobody was doing this. Yeah. That's what was so, what I fell in love with when I met with the, with the CEO was just the, her brilliance, her brilliance to think about creating this. She's like, the experience of buying a pillow is so weird. Mm-hmm. Something that we all use. I mean, you get you're, the market's massive, right? So you're you're entering a market that you know is not going away. Mm-hmm. We're not we're not going to stop using pillows anytime soon. And there's so much out there and so much information and everybody trying to pitch you and sell you. And nobody's made something customizable like this. Mm-hmm. And our company, right? I mean, you can go get all these types of different pillows from different places, and maybe one company offers all these different types, but nobody has made like this customizable, user friendly type of service. So you get exactly what you want. And then, mm. and I imagine, you know, because this is now the second pillow we've bought. By the time I buy pillow three or four, which obviously, I mean, how many pillows have you owned in your lifetime? Like I know. probably a hundred of these damn things, mm-hmm. right? So I'm sure by the time I order my second and my third one, I'm going to like have it like just yeah. absolutely perfect. Oh, I know. Like. I'm excited. Like even at our house. So we've been sleeping on like a queen forever and we're just starting to like see the drawings for the remodel that we're going to do in the house and like where we're etching it out for a king bed finally and like like redoing the whole thing. I'm going to be like Pluto pillowing everything on my I didn't know that you, you sleep on a queen right now? Yeah, dude. Like oh, it's been man, that tight. Would drive, that would drive me crazy. It's on top has, of each other. Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, no. It used I to be cool, right? I, <laughs> but, <laughs> How many years have been married? <laughs> now it's a little annoying. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right, right now, Jessica does the whole pillow fort thing because she's still pregnant. So it's like pillows. I mean, there's like nine. That's pillows. good. That was like I mean, between out. your legs and under the belly and over the this and the head and whatever. And I'm in. The, I'm on the side of the bed, and it's like that this, was exactly this me, mountain bro. of pillows, a wall of China of pillows. <laughs> so I should tell her. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta write notes and throw them over the wall. <laughs> <laughs> hey, babe, here's what's going on right now. Uh, anyway. <laughs> well, well, speaking of technology, invading forces. This is some kind of crazy news, some bad news. But um, there's this this bot that this deep fake bot that right now is getting a lot of attention because what it does is it takes pictures of people and it removes their clothes. Ooh. So, it, well, you think that's cool, but there's a lot of people who are really upset about it because it looks real. So now there's like naked pictures of you. 
but you're not actually naked, but it looks like you're naked. Wait, so it takes pictures that already exist and then makes you naked from those pictures? Yes, okay. it's an AI tool that removes items of clothing from photos, and it's targeted more than 100,000 women. And people oh, are right. what are these? Yeah, like do they have this database of all these bodies, and they just like sort of like copy paste it on there? Like, I what, don't. I have no idea. I have no idea. But they're they're under a lot of heat right now, and huh. a lot of these some of these women. Is that are, bad? If I'm like curious of what it looks like, trying to like I'm, match you I'm, to I'm porn stars. Or I'm like? just interested in like how accurate it could be. Well, here's the thing. Here's why it's why it's a problem. Is they're not checking people. Well, I, I know why it's a problem. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> He's like, Let me explain why this okay, is an issue. Here's the thing: people don't like this. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no shit, guy. <laughs> hey, let's do it with Justin's picture. Let's, <laughs> That's right. let's, let's try it out. I, yeah, I, I do. Was, I want to see, like, how, accurate let's see how accurate it is. Uh, I'll, be, I'll, I'll be honest. I'll be Put like, boobs on like, them. No, no way, way. Right. it doesn't hang that way. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, doing it. it's way smaller than yeah, that. There's no way. Yeah. Big old bush. It's just bush. All bush. All bush. 100% push. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. That was hot, dude. Yeah, yeah, man. That That's came crazy. Out. Yeah, so, uh, but here's the problem. Here, okay, no. Uh, here's the other problem with it is not just that people don't like it, that it's not checking people's ages. It's mm. not doing any of that stuff. So it could potentially take someone who's underage and do it. And, I mean, you know, people's uh, pictures are on the internet now. Everybody's pictures are. Did you guys mm. see the, uh, speaking of, like, inappropriate shit, did you guys see the guy who got caught with uh, tu the Tubin guy who got caught? Oh, CNN. <laughs> Yes, the guy I've seen it again. Pulling a tube in. I saw the one-minute guy breaking it down. It's pretty Oh, hilarious. my God. So apparently he was on a, a Zoom conference call, right? Right. And he starts masturbating and then said he didn't know his camera was on. My question is this. What are you doing masturbating when, when no, you have a so call going on? Yeah, it goes further yeah, than that. Dude. So what it was, it was, it was like, and I'm sure, I mean, how many conference calls have we been on or Zoom calls where it's like a speaker's talking and then you don't have any responsibility? Yeah, you have like a 15 minute break. Well, uh, so really... I think what he was, I think what he was, he was, he had another window open and he was. He didn't know that he was being. Yes. Busy. And he was talking dirty back and forth with somebody oh. and didn't realize his camera was probably on. And then he gets caught just doing his business, wow. dude. Oh, that's... didn't he work for CNN? Is that? Yeah, right there. he did. That's yeah, him right there. He's suspended. I mean, that will forever be a thing, right? Tubin. Don't get caught doing that. Yeah. <laughs> that's got to be the most embarrassing. Pulling like, a tubin. It's got to be so like that'll never leave you. That's like it's like pooping your pants in fifth grade. Like you'll always be known now for doing this. Oh, he'll yeah. be done too, right? I mean, that like talk about a career ender. Well, like, I who mean, picks him up? After well, that? let me let me put it to you this way. I'll 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 say somebody's name who has. Who was extremely successful, but now there's only one thing you think about when I say PB Herman. PB Herman. Herman. Yeah. I knew it right away. PB yes. Herman, successful TV show, movies, everybody loved him. Gets caught jerking off one time. Which, yeah. by the way, that's it. Was I still a big top PB. Was, was in a was in a doovy, dirty movie theater, which is a little more understandable than a Zoom, yeah, a Zoom to... business call. <laughs> you know, what I'm saying like even PB had more class, <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, you right. imagine You're just in there with other creeps. Yeah, we're yeah. all doing our conference call. You know what I mean? Hey, yeah. what's going on, Justin? What the? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, oh man, I didn't know. <laughs> what are well, you doing, dude? I, I told you I'm that. So excited! I told you that my buddy, who's a principal, right, at the school, said that that's actually an issue that they've had to like, like, tell teachers, like, hey, listen, like, when you are doing these, like, calls, put a shirt on. Yeah, put a shirt on. Like, you can't, like some teachers. Well, just, that's the thing. I could see people not having clothes, but like to to be like, you know, jacking it. Come on, guy. Uh, I remember one time. This was early days where uh, Doug and I were filming. I don't remember what program it was, either Maps Anabolic or the No BS Six Pack Formula, one of those two. And I would wear a lavalier mic, so it's a, so it's a wireless mic, right? And um, I took a break and had and I went to the bathroom. I, I didn't do anything in the bathroom other than what you're supposed to do in the bathroom, which is use the bathroom. But Doug was out in the gym area with the headphones on, and he can't, I come back out, he's laughing because he can hear everything. So I left the mic on. That's yeah. funny. On accident. You know? Hot mic. Hot mic. Uh. Yeah. Hey, I got a new favorite product that uh, we work with. I mean, and I you know I hate I love all the people we work with. But this has to be the most effective, consistent product I've used ever for any sponsors we work with. You're going with. to talk about the sleep net, aren't yes. you? Oh, my. It has to be that. Gosh. I know. I, know. I use it again. What do they put in there? I'm on like number it works seven, like dude. so well. 100% of it, the time. It's crazy how One, well it works. If I use it, I'm going to sleep hard yeah. every single time. There's yeah. never, so far, have never failed me. I had a great call with them yesterday, actually. So we were talking about 2021, right? So we're obviously we'll remain with them. And did they yeah, say they knocked that <coughs> out of the park? Did they man. say that they're getting a good response? Oh yeah, that? no. They said so. We <clears throat> over the when COVID hit, uh, number. This is just being completely transparent with our audience, whether they care or not. Uh, with, but with you guys, I haven't shared this with you guys over COVID uh, months. 
uh, they saw a slight dip in performance. And so, you know, it's important to us that our partners are doing well. Like we want it to be a, a mutual, uh, mutually beneficial relationship. And so the the big discussion uh, was okay. Let's let's adjust some things as far as advertising dollars goes, and and let's see if things get better. And they said, well, we have this sleep product that we're really uh, proud of that's coming that I think that your audience is going to love. We'll see what happens after that. So this was the call actually that that we were having in response to this launch of them doing that. And uh, if it did uh, boost sales and stuff, they, it just it went out, it blew it out the water. So like, oh, good, yeah, performance is like phenomenal, and they're like, every we're getting all kinds of great feedback from your guys' people. So if I it's, it's if I take it, this is one hundred percent of the time what's happened to me so far. If I take it, number one, I sleep hard, I dream mm-hmm. almost every time. I have like very vivid dreams. And I don't wake up, uh, dude. I wake groggy. up so refreshed. Yes, it, it, it's like whoa. I, it just reminds you what a good night's sleep's supposed to feel like. It's, it, the, it works so well that I'm trying not to take it all the time. I know that's, that's okay. So I, too. <laughs> so I've used it every single night now for uh, God. It's got to be now ten days or oh, more, really? twelve days. Okay, see, I haven't done that yet. So I want to see. I want to see. Oh, is if it you adapt it, to it? Yeah, if you adapt to it, and I want to take it for my goal is to take it until I run out of the bottle. Not take it for a week and notice if I, see if I get a rebound because mm-hmm. sometimes with with sleep herbs and whatever you take it and then you go off and then you can't get good sleep anymore without it. So I want to test all of that. But so far I've mm-hmm. never used anything, and I've tried so many different. And not that I have issues with sleep, but I've you know I love experimenting with supplements and stuff. I've never had anything as effective as this. When I it comes made to sleep. sure and experimented you know a night of drinking alcohol and using it just for you guys you know to make sure I come. Oh my gosh. <laughs> And I, I still slept great. I don't even know if that's recommended. It's not. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, I'll be that guy. You know, I'll go off the rails. You wake up at 4 p.m.? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I still slept well, man. No, it's fire. First question is from Gavin Brumbaugh. What are some ways or exercises to improve body coordination? I'm a competitor in still timber sports. Oh, that's dope! What a and cool this sport. skill is very important. Oh, that's yeah. cool. Well, nothing will. That's the that's the uh, chainsaw like Axe speed stuff, stuff, right? Yeah, and then they climb up and and they actually like chop. They have like chainsaw and chopping events too. I just no feel way. Like I want to go to one of the these. Axe. Yeah, yeah I want to go to one of these. What maybe. a manly yeah. competition! Yeah, yeah. I feel like like them and arm wrestlers, right? Uh, I feel like this is right up Justin's alley. Oh, yeah, I feel 100%. like you, I feel like this is what you would have done if you would have known that they existed when you were younger. I had no idea. If it wasn't for if we didn't get in his way, he by now might be a famous <laughs> still competitor. Yeah. So here's the thing. Nothing will improve your body's coordination, uh, specific coordination, like practicing the sport that you're trying to get good at. There's right. nothing Nothing will rival that. There's no exercise. There's no mobility movement. There's no nothing that'll make you better at whatever you're trying to get better at than mm-hmm. practicing that actual thing itself. So that's number one. <laughs> number two, generally we can put in this, these are, it can be very specific depending on this, the sport or whatever you're trying to get good at. But generally speaking, gross motor movements, big full body movements are going to be better at improving coordination than isolated movements. So now what do you, what do you think about this though? And I'm curious to mm, Justin's opinion on yeah. that. Like, I feel like mace bells would be sick for someone yeah, like probably. this. Well, because was, a lot of the, what they're doing is they have to balance core stability. They're they're moving the, the chainsaw from one side to the other side of their body really quick. And I feel like that that body control with swinging and moving a weight around like that would be great for this oh, person. Oh, anything swinging. We're talking Indian clubs. We're talking like those, those iron bells, um, uh, iron clubs. Uh, you know stuff like that. I think that these unconventional type of exercises, where it, it, it requires a lot of high skill just to learn a lot of the moves, because there's some basic moves you can learn, but you can really get uh, you know into the weeds when it comes to uh, different types of movements that you can produce with with weight. And I think that venturing into that direction, um, it, it requires a lot of concentration. It requires a lot of body control, yes. awareness. You know, and it's a whole another skill that I've actually found it does translate into other like motor skills and especially like hand-eye coordination. Yeah. The, now the areas that you might want to focus on uh, improving strength or stamina or stability, the, here's an easy, and I'm not very familiar with this co- type of competition. I can picture what you do, but I've never trained anybody who's done this, but uh, here's a kind of a rule of thumb. What parts of your body tend to get beat up and fatigued the most, right? So um, I would imagine in something like this, this is a guess, 
But I would imagine your hands uh, and your forearms probably take uh, a, yeah, a nasty beating. Grip, shoulders, and back, that's, I would think. That's what I would think, right? So I would do mobility movements. Um, I would do strengthening movements, appropriate amounts, because if you, you can overtrain them, yeah. for those parts of the body to improve your stamina and your strength so that when you're doing what you're doing, your technique is always well, really good. Well, especially being so dominant if you're right side is chopping and doing most of the work too to be able to offset that with well, other they mobility do, drills. I think when they do at least I if I they go both sides. I've seen yeah, I've seen that yeah, before, for speed but, you go both you but go not both with the sides. chainsaw. Yeah. No, but, even with the chainsaw I think. They go with the Well, the chainsaw grip? well the, oh, I don't know if they switch the grip right. as much as they they switch like going up and down like I don't know. This is this is a cool question for me because I've never I know I'm like trying to think I've never over. trained somebody who does this and it would be really like of course be like doing this as long as we have it's it's always fun actually to try and figure something out like this. Like well, I would really like enjoy trying to write a program for someone like well, this. Well, here, think about it this way. You guys have all worked um, and been around a lot of blue collar workers, mm -hmm. people who would do similar type stuff. I've def I've uh, I've worked <clears throat> with people who've Yeah, but so, and that's where I think your advice is good because the, the, that basic like grip strength, shoulder, yeah. back strength, like that all makes sense. And I don't disagree. I think that absolutely belongs. But the, the fun part of this programming would be to me, like what what Justin was alluding to, which is like these creative, like high technical, high skill type of swinging weight around and controlling that because that's what they have to move that axe and that the and the uh, mm -hmm. chainsaw around really quick with all their movements. Mm -hmm. And if you've got great control with a mace bell like that, and you've trained that, okay. So I've got I've got all the events right here. I okay, just let me hear them. So here's the first one. It's called the springboard. So the competitor uses two mm -hmm. springboards to ascend to the top of a nine-foot pole and chop a firmly attached 12-inch diameter block. From so you know which one that is, right? That's where they yeah. chop it, they put the wood up, then they climb they up to it, then they chop on again. Top. Yeah, and then they chop like pieces of it off. Yes. Here's the other one. Uh, it's called the still stock saw. Competitors begin with both hands on the log. When the signal is given, the, the sawers using identical chainsaws. But wait a second, go back to the first one. Let's talk about it for a second. Okay, so okay, what, okay. What, what I picture with that, with that, that's why the mace bell makes so much sense to me because yeah. he's got a balance on a board while he's chopping with his left and his right back and forth like that to be able to swing a heavy mace back and forth and stay stable and control. Yeah, and there's some cool stuff you can do with chopping movements specifically with the mace bell too to emulate that and also like even incorporate your legs and lunge and chop. And so, yeah, the mace bell, I, I would think would have have you know a bit of carryover there for mm. sure then they do uh one where they have both hands on a log when the signal is given they make two cuts uh, uh through identical logs and i don't know if that's done for speed um then there's an underhand mm -hmm. chop where they stand um on a 12 to 14 foot log at the signal they chop through the log that's yeah. this one right here i they think isometrics would be a big thing to really focus on too especially with all that just like maintaining your control and grip but like having a really intensive grip uh, because controlling a chainsaw like that and they use huge chainsaws yeah like, i have seen massive. these competitions you you're gonna have to have incredible core stability incredible yeah. i mean and power yeah mm -hmm. that's why that's why that's why the mace makes so much sense to me because the the amount of core stability you have to have while you're swinging because you can get i mean you can slowly progress those bells to where you're swinging that i mean right. how much is that big one you swing out there yeah so the the real big one's like all oh, 45 pounds <clears throat> yeah yeah i'm actually getting a 55 pound like a somebody that uh you know i talk to every now and then he's like oh i want you to try this 55 pound bell I'm like yeah oh my god bring it oh there you go there you go yep. yeah i'm looking up a, a the, what their workouts tend to look like right now to see what they what they tend to do yeah um because i'm very interested to see what that looks like these guys but these guys but you know like, what their forearms God, the, the, are God, those split, chains, those split are stances. You know, you're going to want to train anti rotation and, and rotational movements. You're going to want to train definite, like high emphasis on core stability and, uh, you know, maybe add in some dexterity, like with, uh, you know, some unconventional tools for, you know, added uh, bits of difficulty for coordination. Maybe mm -hmm. invite us to one of the shows so we can come watch. I, I want to watch. Yeah. yeah, I do. Next question is from Cass May. What are some exercises to help with overactive upper traps on pulling movements? So this is actually quite common. A lot of people get yep. uh, tight uh, kind of upper upper back or neck muscles and they'll feel stiff in there. And that's because the upper traps uh, are like this like they said in the question are overactive meaning they're doing more work than they should be doing to stabilize the the shoulders. How do you deal with this? You train the opposing uh, movement typically. So in this case, I would do rowing exercises while focusing on bringing the shoulder blades back and down like yes. almost like you're trying to bring 
and put your shoulder blades in your back pockets. And what this will do is strengthen the mid back and it'll offset that the, the fact that your shoulders want to shrug so much. When I used to train clients, this is super common. And what I would do is I'd have them do rows. They would use light weight. They'd focus on the back and down squeeze. So we do a little pause at the squeeze. Mm -hmm. And then in between sets, I would take my hands or my elbows and I would press down into their traps and, and, and give them a little bit of a massage, not because I'm a massage therapist, but rather because I'm trying to send a signal to the CNS that's telling those muscles to relax. Yeah. And honestly, after two or three sets of doing that, it, you would notice tremendous uh, benefit right away because autom automatically opposing muscles are active. You're pushing on the tight part. The CNS is saying, we don't need to be so tight uh, in these muscles, and he would feel better. I actually had a client that um, I used to have to have him get a massage there before he came and saw me to work because they were so overactive. They were they were like rocks. This dude mm -hmm. was jacked. He was like mm -hmm. an older dude who's in his fifties. First time we ever worked out was like repping three fifteen, just straight gorilla strength naturally, right? And he had these like massive shoulders and traps. And when we would go to do a row. I couldn't even get them to retract and depress. They were like so fixed mm. in that position. So like after, and I tried for a while and just couldn't get it, man. And I finally just, hey, you need to go see a massage therapist before you come in and see me, get those things to relax a little bit. And then we could do a lot of the rowing because that was so bad. Yeah, I think too. Yeah, I mean, that's, that was part of my assessment. I mean, when especially rowing was uh, that was a big one you want to look for. See their, their shoulders elevate and they're in that position while they're rowing. Uh, it's, it's, pretty obvious but similar to what sal you know said in terms of like being able to kind of point that out and add little bits of external stimulus so they knew uh you know they could actually feel it and start like sending that signal uh and then i would if i had to i'd take them and progress that and really try to like establish more like uh understanding of of that function of of elevating uh retracting depressing and then protracting so up this circle and so getting into those circles so they had a little bit more understanding of like the function of of all that their shoulder blade and everything involved what are you doing like wall circles with them wall then? circles oh yeah wall circles are really good for you know the other thing that's important to note when we're talking about this too is that you know uh, you tell someone to do rows and like anything else they have a tendency of oh i, I can do these rows and then they can increase weight um, I would put more emphasis on the retraction and depression and like, and even like a, a isometric hold for like five seconds mm -hmm. yeah. versus increasing your weight. Oh, so, prone cobra is a great way to prime before. Doing yeah. So don't, them. don't get caught up in just cause you're rowing that, you know, let's row heavier and get stronger and get stronger in this because it's a corrective thing we're trying to do. Your form is, I mean, your form is always more important, but it's really more important when we're doing things for corrective purposes, not to just increase the weight to increase the weight, you're far better off uh, intensifying the isometric hold position, which is the retraction and the depression of the shoulders and doing that and intensifying that than you are, oh, let's add 15 more pounds just because I didn't do it. Because very easily, as soon as you start reaching that, like towards, you know, what's difficult for you, the body will default back to its, uh, you know, original pattern. Yeah, if you use any any type of resistance that's at all intense, you're going to go back to your old movement. In fact, this is how I would convince my clients is I would take my phone and I'd stand with them. First, I'd stand with them. I'd have them do the row perfectly, and then they'd do it. And then I'd move away, and I'd have them do it on their own, and I'd film it. Then I'd add a little bit of weight, have them do it again, and I would show them very clear contrast and see, look, you didn't even notice that your form went the other way, um, but it did, and that's because uh, we went a little too heavy. You need to go light when you're doing correctional exercise because the form, you need to teach your yeah, body you the need technique. need to connect to it. That's it. Next question is from Junin87. What are your views on cleansing or fast days? Cleansing or fast days? I don't like the the terminology. Mm, uh, yeah, like here's the the value of fasting is this. Okay, the, the main values of fasting is this, uh, and I know that there's studies that show that it benefits the body, and you get uh, cell autophagy, and you get you know neurogenesis. Now and, all that happens with a low calorie yeah. diet too, by the way. So you don't need to necessarily fast for all that. But here's the real benefits. Okay. Really, it's, it's and for the right people, not everybody, but for the right people, it helps you uh, develop a better relationship with food, really helping you detach from something that we tend to have a bad relationship with. So, for example, if you did a 48-hour fast, and again, it needs to be the, uh, appropriate for you. If your issues are that you tend to starve yourself, fasting will make things worse. But if it's right for you, let's say you fast for 48 hours, and in that 48-hour period, you feel stressed like you normally do or you're bored like you normally do or you want to distract yourself or whatever, 
you're not eating. Now you're becoming more aware of how you tend to snack or eat when you're bored or stressed or at certain times. Now you know how to deal with feeling cravings. Cravings are very different from hunger and you can start to identify those things. So it can help with your attachment to food. It can help with your relationship to food. This is why fasting is present in every major world religion, why it's Mm -hmm. present in most spiritual practices, not for the fat loss or weight loss effects, but rather for the, you know, for lack of a better term, the spiritual uh, benefits. But as far as helping the body, I mean, uh, maybe for like specific uh, cases, but otherwise, no, I wouldn't recommend anybody fast to cleanse their body. Yeah. I, I mean, I, th- I think it's good to mechanistically to uh, take a, take a break and let your digestive system, uh, y- you know, sort Chill of out. Yeah. Just to have time to, uh, you know, like, like function without uh, bombarding it and inundating it all the time with food. And, I, and again, like this is, I, all those values that you brought up in, in terms of, of being able to reflect and, and have all the cognitive benefits and, um, you know, step away from the ritual of food too. Like, I think, I mean, all that is, is the main benefits you're going to get from fasting. I just, I hate calling it detoxing because I know there's a lot of uh, products and things. They even brought up isogenics, which I was familiar with. Like some of my clients were always asking me about that. And it's like this solution that they're trying to sell to basically like, you know, get all the, the quote unquote toxic uh, chemicals and elements uh, out of your body while you're going through this. Uh, really, the the main benefit is is uh, you know is just stepping away and having uh, you know those those other benefits that you'd mentioned earlier. I have a very specific way that I use fasting with clients, and it's and I don't use it for everybody, um, and I don't use it with somebody who's just starting with me. Uh, most clients that are are just getting started uh, with a diet and a training program, like we're we're learning what all the foods are and, and macronutrients and figuring out where their caloric maintenance is at. And most every client that I've ever taken, very rarely am I not trying to uh, speed their metabolism up by in increasing their caloric intake and adding good foods to their diet. So much of what I do at the beginning, no matter what your goal is, even if it's weight loss, I'm adding to your diet at first, um, and then I use fasting to interrupt like us being regimen for a long time. So let's say you've been training with me for six months and the first three months was a lot of education and consistency and figuring out your body and where you're at and get you to understand what carbs, fats, and proteins are and what, what a good day of eating looks like you, bad day of eating looks like for you, like, and then being, con- and then stringing some consistent weeks and maybe months together of dieting correctly and eating well. And then I like to interrupt that. Right, so now that they get it, they 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 get the importance of getting all these macros in and being consistent with what they eat. Then I like to just like take it away from them and say, okay, now we're gonna on Friday we're gonna fast for 24 hours, and then it, and it's literally for the purpose that Sal is talking about, which is to just I want to first train you on how how important it is for you to get all these foods and be consistent with it, and then I also want to interrupt that by showing you that listen, you don't have to always be eating all these foods. Let's completely not have anything. And start to understand what real hunger is like, because a lot of time people think they're hungry when a craving kicks up every two to three hours and detach from that. That is the only way I'm using it. I'm never using it for a, we need to detox your body, or this may help us lose some more body fat, or you, none of the things, and all the ways that they promote fasting and all the all the benefits that, that come with it, I don't use it for those reasons. It's simply to interrupt as somebody who's been training or eating and dieting consistently. And that normally looks like a competitor for me. It's rarely an average person. Most people, I would spend most of my time trying to get them to be consistent with their eating and be consistent with the things that we're trying to do and just throwing a day of fasting at that person who hasn't even strung two weeks together of eating you know, similar type macros. Uh, I don't see a lot of value in interrupting that with a, with a fast. I do, though, when I would get a competitor who is like, you know, for the last year, they've been eating the same foods and they eat every two hours. And they're like, so they feel like if they don't eat that they're going to lose muscle and they have, or they, they'll never be able to build unless they're hitting these exact targets every day. And they have this, this crazy attachment to food. Those are the people that I see the most value to, to do a fast with. Now I've also heard though, too, like one of my, 
well, somebody that I, you know, it, I hang out with every now and then. He was telling me he was doing like sort of like a cleanse, but it was all just like a lot of fiber. And he would, he would like every now and then intermittently throughout the year, he would do like this, uh, uh, an excessive amount of fiber to try and clear out all the shit in his body. Yeah. It's not, it's okay. It's not like a chimney, you know, yeah. you, you know, it's not like, or like pipes, you know, where you think, oh, I got to flush something through here to clean out all the pipes. It's not really how it works. Right. So this terminology is all marketing kind of terminology. Yeah. The cleansing effect that you may get from a fast is just cleansing you of your maybe bad attachment to food. Um, so it's more of a mental thing uh, than anything. But if you're one of those people that, you know, if you, if your bad relationship to food is skipping meals and not eating, you know, I've worked it's a, a worst, lot of cl- yeah, it's a worst Oh yeah. yeah it's, it's, they call that starving yourself. Ter- terrible idea. Absolutely. Next question is from Dave Sheeran. Is there any detriment to always wearing sunglasses outside? I live in Florida and always have them on when outside. I've seen mixed answers from various articles. Okay, so you know what's interesting about this? this so there, there actually is some potential uh, detriments from wearing sunglasses. I, I've heard this. I was like, curious to hear you answer this. Yeah, so um, your body receives signals from your skin, from the food that you eat, from your emotions, and also from your eyes. And when you go outside, UV rays go through the eyes, and the pituitary gland reads the intensity of the UV rays, and then it it puts, I think they're called melanocytes, if I'm not mistaken, into production, which help your skin tan. So if you're somebody that, uh, you know, if you sunburn easily, wearing sunglasses will actually make you sunburn even easier. Oh, mm-hmm. interesting. So it actually would reduce. Damn it. No, no joke. <laughs> your your skin, it your body helps prepare your skin for how it can adapt to the sun based off of, uh, or one of the factors is reading the UV rays through the eyes. So if you wear dark sunglasses and you go outside, your brain thinks it's darker than it really is. It thinks there's less UV rays than they really are. You're not going to produce um, as many of these chemicals that help your skin adapt, and you're more likely to get sun damage. Well, isn't there also uh, health benefits to actually just the sun on your eyeballs, your eyes themselves? Because like, I know that the Juve did some uh, research around the Juve light, and be- looking into the light is actually good for you. And I can't remember what it is. You know, I'm the worst with that, right? So you're the best with being able to read one study and remember. Yeah. I yeah. know I read it, and I know that, because I remember, like, should I be wearing some sort of eye protection when I do this Juve light all the time? And it was actually the opposite. It was really good for me to be looking at the juve light when I when I'm actually doing now that's it. different than the sun right so you don't mm-hmm. want to look at the sun that can really no damage your eyes. no of course not but directly at outside, it but being outside and minus that, the UV and yeah all that. like not looking directly at it but just still receiving that and it not being filtered by a sunglass yeah. I would think that there are other health benefits for your eyes there are there are mood boosting benefits uh, there's hormone boosting benefits um, and I don't know if it, about you guys but I noticed I used to wear sunglasses all the time so I used to love wearing sunglasses they look cool. Um, if you're at the pool, you know, when you're, especially when you're a kid, you can put on sunglasses and look at people and they don't even know you're looking at them type of deal. Yeah, of course, every guy, that's what every guy does this. <laughs> yeah. They so, don't know I'm looking yeah, at them. Yeah, yeah, those nobody can like tell this. my dark <laughs> sunglasses. Um, but you know, I remember. Don't lump us in that, you pervert. Yeah, sh- <laughs> I saw both your guys' faces. <laughs> Dude, if they could see where I'm looking yeah, right don't now. Tell, don't tell anybody. <laughs> no, but here's a deal. Uh, I noticed this as an adult. The more I wore them, the more intolerant I became to the sun. So I'll go outside in the sun and I'm like, oh, I can't. I can't, uh, I, I need my sunglasses. I never wear them now. That almost never happens to me anymore. So I think you also start to lose your ability to adjust to the changing light. So now, there's, now I'm not saying don't wear sunglasses, um, but I think if you wear, the question is if you're wearing them all the time, can it be detrimental? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, the studies do show that. Right. Will- uh, I've heard this and I've actually, yeah, I've tried, I've tried to like challenge myself to kind of not wear them as frequently because it was the first thing when I get in my truck and I'm putting my sunglasses on because I get the glare and everything right away. And I'm always like so squinty and then I'll get a headache uh, from being so squinty uh, with that. So if it, 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 for me, it's just like the level of brightness. Like I'll, I'll try and like, <laughs> I'm very squinty. <laughs> Picture, huh? <laughs> oh, I can't see. Like, I'm always like that. I hate it. Yeah, it comes with the skin. Yeah, <laughs> but have you noticed any difference from wearing them or not wearing them, whether or not you get sunburn easier or not? I haven't noticed that, and because um, I, I wonder how strong the effect is. Right? Well, yeah, I, I wonder. I also wonder. So you know that uh, Felix Cray. I'm over here just plugging all our sponsors. Felix Cray. <laughs> this was not We're intended. Doing I, I promise. Yeah, but yeah. no, Felix Cray makes sunglasses too. So I wonder if there's some difference in their sunglasses, right? Yeah, mm. I think. I mean, a lot of it has to do with comfort. You know, if you're out in the sun. I mean, and, and that's where I could see potentially the benefit. Like if I'm laying out at the beach, 
Uh, I mean, I might need sunglasses, especially if you're laying on your back and you're trying to tan or relax or whatever. Um, and I don't know how strong an effect this is. Um, I would, I would guess that this effect is more important to consider if you're fair skinned, right? So if you're somebody that is, is, is very sensitive to the sun, then you may want to consider this. You know, if you're, you know, like I am when I get go out in the sun and I, if I go out in the sun for a couple of days, I'm very, very dark. Probably not that big of a deal, uh, big big of a, a of a problem if I wear sunglasses uh, or not. But for someone like Justin, maybe that's something you should you know you consider. should consider. Yeah, but I look cool, so I'll keep doing it. That's true. Yeah. Uh, look, Mind Pump is recorded on video as well as audio. Come check us out on YouTube, Mind Pump Podcast. You can also find us all on Instagram. Uh, even though I'm being shadow banned, you can find me at Mind Pump Sal. You can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin. Same Adam Sal. at Mind Pump Adam, and you can even find Doug the producer at Mind Pump Doug or, you know, in this hospital bed. And I think sometimes this is tough uh, for dads. You don't want to mm. show your kids that you're tired, you're stressed, that you or get sad or that you, you know, uh, you show anything other than strength and whatever. I think that can be a big mistake because it can teach your children to not be okay.